Ah, tis so peaceful here. I can be completely weightless, alone with my thoughts. I sure do love the ocean blue. Uh, look, I just don't like writing water shaders, so a green screen was easier. A feature of some of my game's runes, these being the system that dictates magic, is that some runes, when combined together, can have a unique new rune, specifically the elemental runes. These are obviously the ones that would be most predisposed for combination magic, and therefore when you combine these spell runes together, you can have interesting different rune combinations. A very obvious one of these is the base fire rune and the base ice rune becoming the water rune when combined together. I quite enjoy this method of having certain runes combined together to create a new unique rune because I feel like it is more creative and fun when the player unlocks a new rune and has a fun new combination. And also, I feel like if I just kept adding new runes for each different combination, I would have maybe too many runes to manage on one menu and it could get a bit confusing. So I feel like the player could just remember that fire and ice become water because that's what happens in the real world, buddy. When casting a water spell on an object, it turns the object into water. This is done in the same way I transform all objects, where I just replace the materials of the object with the elements that they have transformed into. So get all the materials, replace them with the water material, and then it's a visual of water. Some objects when transformed will have a smoother surface, and for these I will get the mesh of the object, and I will transform it into a smoother version of the mesh if one is available. I just make these beforehand. Finally, I track if the player is inside of the water or not. If the player is colliding with an object, it will be stored in their collision data. I will just search through this collision data and see which elemental objects they are colliding with. If one of the elemental objects is a block of water, and the player is not already in water, I will check at the base of the player, this being the origin point, and the center of the player and the top of the player is contained within the water. This means they're deep enough in the water to actually be surfacing in the water. Otherwise, they would just be paddling in the water, or the water would be above their head, and because blocks can float in this game, if you set them upright, this could be a situation where you don't actually be inside the water. So I had to check all of these collision points and maintained inside the block of water to make sure that the player is actually in the water. And then all I do is I change the player's substate system to be the water system. The player's movement is then changed to be the water movement, this is a lot less controlled and a lot less acceleration based, so the player has this weighty sort of paddling breaststroke motion as they are inside the water. And finally, I will set the player's Y position to be the top point of the water. This is pretty simple, I get the collision data for the water, I find the highest point in the water, I set the player's Y position to be that highest point with an offset so they are shallowly inside of the water. And that's about it. All I have to do now is make sure the player is maintained within the water, and once they leave the water, they will not be in the water anymore, and they will just be set into their mid-air state. Next we have the data for the actual water block itself. So, an interesting aspect of the collision of the water is that when changed into a water or gaseous material, an object has to have it so the player can walk through it. If the object is a liquid or a gas, the player can obviously pass through it because you, as a fleshy being, can pass through waters and gases. However, an interesting difficulty with this system is that while the player needs to be able to pass through these object layers, other objects cannot pass through these layers. For example, you can turn an object into a liquid, that's fine, but then if you turn another object into a liquid and push them against each other, they shouldn't collide with each other and go through each other, because obviously this would create a lot of issues with clipping. Because if you can transform an object at any point, you could just transform it back, and then you have two objects clicking into each other. And that's a real pain to code for. 
I could have a system where an object is a liquid or a gas, and then when transformed back they will account for this clipping, and then just move themselves, but I thought this would be slightly more janky and a bit more awkward to control. So what I elected for is to have objects have collision with each other, and the ground, and other objects, while they are in these liquid and gaseous states, and just not have a collision with the player. So what I do in this state, is I will get the collision data for the object. I will get its collider, and I will set it to a trigger collider. This is essentially just a see-through version of the collider. It can still have collision data, but things can pass through it. For example, the player. I will then get this collider, and I will copy its data, and duplicate this, and make it a child of the object. So now we have two colliders on the object. I will then set the new collider to not be a trigger, so it is a maintained recreation of the collision geometry that the object originally would have had. I will then change the layering of this to be a layer that only interacts with collision objects and spell objects, so your spells can still interact with these objects. The player will not be included in this list. So the player will never have physics with this object to begin with, and therefore will basically pretend like this physical blocky object that is a duplication of actual collision data does not exist, so they can pass through it, but other objects can't. And this is why I'm able to turn objects into liquids and gases, and other such things that the player can walk through, but these objects don't just pass through the actual geometry of the game, because that would cause too many issues, and I don't want issues in my game. Another thing you can do in my game is combine a spell logics. There is a bunch of different rooms of what spells can do, and what you can do with your spell combinations. Fun fact, if you calculate all the unique spell combinations, it's about 11 million, so I'm pretty big brained to go with this system. And what you can do with this, is you can combine different spell logics. Up until this point, I've just been talking about using a water spell on other things. This is one combination of spells where you combine a fire and an ice rune to make a water rune. What if you combine this with other runes? For example, what if you combine this with the rune that, com that accommodates to the player character, the self rune? This would then mean that you're casting the water rune on yourself. What could happen in this situation? You become a puddle. You become a puddle of water, and that's it. I feel like maybe I could have made something a bit more useful. So when casting a water rune on yourself, you become water. Okay, so as previously mentioned, there's a lot of spell combinations in my game, it's very complicated. In such a system, you're going to get combinations that are bad. This is one of the bad ones. So when using the self rune combined with an element, the player will transform into whatever element they have applied to themselves. In the water's case, they become a puddle of water, and they can slide down slopes as the puddle of water. The use case for this in certain levels is... Um... Uh, maybe you could touch a, a fire and put it out. The use case of turning into a puddle of water is mostly that you slide under surfaces, so when turned into a puddle of water, you are smaller and you have a smaller hitbox. So you could turn into a puddle of water on the slope, slide down it, and then as you're slid under an object, your hitbox is shorter and you're just going to slide straight under the object and go under it. I will freely admit this is a mostly funny system, but I do quite enjoy the fact that the player can turn into a puddle of water. The animations for this is one idle animation, which is eight frames of the water wiggling around, six frames of the water falling when you're in midair, a frame of the character transforming into water, which is four smear frames. I sure do love me some smear frames. And then eight directional animations for if the character's water is sliding down a slope that is left, right, up, down, diagonally, left, right, diagonally, top, right, you get the picture. Basically the eight directional inputs of the player to give the impression of the water actually having some physics and flow as it flows down a sloped surface. That's it baby, you turn it to a puddle. Look, I promise the other transformation systems are a bit more interesting. I made one where you can turn into a snowball, and the snowball grows as you roll. That one's pretty cool. Finally, we had the player's animations when on the water. Mwah. Big fan of these. These are some fun ones to animate. Can you tell why these animations were so much easier and fun to make? Is it 
possibly because two thirds of the character's body are obscured by the water, so I didn't have to draw it in detail. It's that reason, it's that reason right there. The character when swimming has two animations, this being idling on water, and swimming on water, they will either do a sort of paddle to maintain their elevation on the water, or they will do a slight breaststroke forward to swim forward. These are five animations for each, so five for idling, five for swimming, and that is, I don't know, like 50 frames of animation. Who's keeping track at this point? I'm a big fan of how these look. I think the player character being able to do these silly little animation forms is pretty interesting and pretty fun. I also like drawing them. Ah, that show was a fun devlog. I'm a big fan of this system. I have been coding a lot of the elemental systems in my game for the past few weeks of coding, and I am finding them very funny. I enjoy the more creative elements that I am able to incorporate with the combinations of the base elements, the fire, ice, slime, and smoke, because I feel like these elements combined together has a lot of creativity for what they can actually create. So far I only have a few of these, for example, fire and ice makes water, but fire, ice, and smoke make snow, which I find to be pretty interesting and also coding the snow mechanics has been pretty fun. Mayhaps that will be the next devlog. Who's to say? Or maybe, just maybe, I'll forget. And we'll never see that mechanic again. Anyway, devlog over. My other game's free, by the way. You can play that on Steam if you like. It's called Pet Plankton. It's pretty good. Okay, bye.